All right, so now we're going to talk about um, torque arm suspensions. And torque arm suspensions are kind of weird. I'm trying to find my eraser here. Torque arm suspensions were not designed for drag racing. Uh, they come from the factory with a good bit of anti-squat already in them, especially if the car is a factory rod height. Um, so they work really good, kind of just out of the box. But what they were designed for uh, was road racing because it takes a lot of the torque of the rear end, torque arm, and applies it to basically the center of the car, right around the transmission now. So uh, instead of having a upper control arm in the back that you can control the angle of in order to help the wrap of the rear end either add or take away from the anti-squat, now all the torque is distributed. We'll go ahead and draw us another pumpkin here. We'll just do it like that. Yep. Yeah, anyway. Now all the torque is distributed by this arm that goes out here and ties into the car. So now this arm will be able to move back and forth, just like all of you know. It, they usually put them on some kind of swinging pendulum, whether uh, and they generally go down, I think. You know, they go down onto the, onto the cross member here. So they're pulling up on the transmission cross member and that allows the rear end to still move back and forth. So what they do is they put a lower control arm and a track bar in the back. So our lower control arm will go here somewhere and then it goes up to the chassis and ties in. Now what generally happens here is because the torque is distributed out here, it gives a little leverage on the rear end whenever you go to leave. It naturally wants to push the rear end down out of the car just to crumb. That really doesn't play a, a, a big role in it. Uh, when they designed this rear end for um, road course racing, uh, they basically wanted to take all the wrap out of the rear end and try to just keep it out of uh, the situation of applying anti-squat or not applying anti-squat. They just kind of wanted to make this rear end neutral. So that way when you come out of a corner and you stab it, the car doesn't do anything funny and act weird. And it works really good for, uh, for road racing. But in a drag racing application, the majority of what you're going to do is in this lower control arm. Because this can still move, it still wants to drive the rear end forward, so there's still pressure pushing on this arm. Uh, and when the pressure pushes on this arm, you can move it and it changes the way it reacts. Now naturally, once again, this thing does want to apply a little bit of anti-squat just because of where this thing's at, and it's trying to roll the rear end down regardless. So if you take your lower control arm and you move it up in the car, and you move it down on the rear end, now we're pushing at more of an angle on this bar. So when it drives forward, of course, it wants to drive the chassis up. It's just acting like a wedge. It's acting like a lever. This will flex a little bit. The rear end will roll forward as it goes up and it's gonna push the chassis of the car up. Just like any four length car, if you change the lower control arm up or down, either way, it's going to apply anti-squat or take it away. The difference is this is applying a, a a set number of anti-squat itself that cannot be changed. The only thing you're going to use this torque arm for is generally there's an adjustment in the top part of it to set pinion angle. Once again, pinion angle does nothing except make the U-joints lift. So make sure you make sure you adjust that thing properly for the drive shaft. It's not going to give you any more bite. It's not going to give you any more separation. It's not going to do anything. Just set the pinion angle up to make the U-joints lift. All of your adjustment for bite is gonna come out of this lower control arm. There's nothing you can do for anything else. So if you have too much bite in it, then you're gonna to wanna to flatten this bar out. If you don't have enough bite in it, then you need to raise this bar up. Uh, and once again, it's just gonna be a, a game as far as what kind of nose percentage you have, how much horsepower the car makes, how tight the converter is and whatnot, as to what this bar is gonna be and what kind of air pressure you're gonna want in the tires. So. I generally tell everybody to kind of start with this bar neutral on one of these cars and then go from there and see what it wants to do. If it's already wrinkling the tire up and you've got 20 pounds of air pressure in a 28105 Pro Bracket Radial and it's still crush, it's already crushing the tire, don't give it any more. Everything you're going to gain is going to be found somewhere else. But anyway, so this is basically torque arm suspension. There's really not a whole lot of adjustment except for the lower control arm. More bite, less bite. I'm Rob D. You guys have a good evening.